and welcome to wrestling. Now this is a Smackdown synopsis for Smackdown 1000. It was a big episode and it started with a montage uh, of course running through all the history of Smackdown over the years. Just before we get into the actual episode though I have to say please subscribe to this channel. Uh, we're doing these videos every week and we want people to join in and communicate with us and let us know their feelings on what's going on in WWE. Of course, I'm missing Adam again. He's not here today. Um, we've got a little bit of scheduling conflict this week, so he couldn't make it for the recording. So I'm doing it on my own, and it's a shame because it's a, a big episode. There was a lot to talk about in this, um, but I'm sure we'll do maybe a little bit of that in following videos. So I've got Monty with me, my dog here. You can't really see him at the minute, but he's set up here with me doing the, the episode with me and I have three cats dotted around the table that are possibly out of shot currently who might just wander across the table across all of the wrestlers here at some point. So Smackdown 1000 started with Truth TV which I thought was a very strange choice but actually I like the segment. Um, obviously it was R-Truth and Carmella because that's the current mix match team, the fabulous Truth. And they did their little seven second dance segment thing, uh, which, you know, is quite funny. I don't know how long that joke's going to remain funny for, but for now it's quite funny. Then we get Steph, who is the uh, special guest for this episode. She comes out to a massive round of boos from the, um, from the fans. She comes out and she does all her usual sort of uh, chatter that she does. And then Shane interrupts her, he comes down, massive cheers, uh, the liked McMahon I guess, he's, he's the, the fierce McMahon isn't he? Um, Steph's pulling a lot of faces when uh, Shane's doing his um, baby face kind of spiel that he does when he comes out, bigging up the crowd and stuff. Was, I thought that was quite funny, you could see Steph doing little faces, it really made me laugh. Then we get the, the main McMahon, Vince. Comes out to, he comes out to huge cheers, uh, people love it when his music drops, uh, and he, he says he doesn't want the kids to argue, no one wants to see you arguing, they're just here to be entertained, and he did his little strut down to the ring that he does, his little power walk, that was funny too. So the crowd start watting Vince when he's, uh, when he's doing his promo, and Steph says, guys you don't need to, uh, you don't need to do the what chant tonight, he's got his hearing aid in, I thought this was funny, I actually thought Steph was on form tonight uh, for Smackdown 1000, so Vince says it's time to entertain the crowd and I was really expecting like a big thing, a bit like a big announcement here or some big return or something, but he says no let's do the dance break, so Vince starts doing the 7 second dance segment with, uh, with R-Truth and Carmella and Steph and uh, Shane even joining that, it, this was quite funny, to see Vince doing that was hilarious. Then we actually get a match, it's AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan versus The Usos, of course AJ and Daniel Bryan are in a match soon together, but they're both baby faces, they're doing the whole thing where they have to team before they actually fight. Um, this was a decent-ish match, um, high energy, and AJ gets the calf crusher in, at the end, um, uh, Daniel Bryan locks in the yes lock on, uh, I don't know which Uso was with which, and uh, that's uh, that's what they were doing, uh, it was a real high energy match, as I say, Daniel Bryan and AJ uh, clash accidentally, and the Usos did a two super kick combo on Daniel Bryan to get the win. So, yeah, the Usos won. Then we get a little backstage segment of Paige with all the past GMs, Vicky Guerrero, um, Teddy Long, and uh, John Laurinaitis. They're all there. It's a very brief segment, actually, and you couldn't really hear what they were saying. It was just for a big pop from the crowd. Then we get Evolution. Here they are, Ric Flair, Batista, Triple H, and Randy Orton. They come out to Line in the Sand, of course, their theme tune. Batista gets a massive ovation when he comes out. Ric Flair's on form when he gets to do his little bit. 
Uh, doesn't look like a man who nearly died last year. He, he was full of beans. Uh, and then we get Dave Batista doing his promo. And he's kind of a weird guy, isn't he, Dave Batista? But he's sort of saying about like not wanting to, to have the mic and stuff. But he gave, he gave a really great, impassioned speech, I thought. I, I thought it was a really good promo. It was lovely to hear. He bigs up each member of, uh, of Evolution. Makes jokes about Ric Flair keeping his dick in his pants. That was funny, um, considering it's a family show as well. Uh, he says that Triple H has done it all, everything in the WWE, except beat him. And then there was like a little tense stare down moment between the two. And eventually Ric Flair comes in and sort of they hug it out and everything's all right. He also, you know, said that he knew Randy Orton was going to be a big deal. Uh, said he could always see his potential. So good little segment and possibly setting you know sowing the seeds for a future feud maybe with Triple H that would be that would be cool I'd really like to see Batista back I, I think he killed it here in this promo and uh, as I say he's a bit of a weird guy but he's he is quite likable as well I think and after everything that's happened with him with uh, with Disney we'll see where it goes but it would be nice to have him back Following this, we get the Aiden English um, costing Rusev his World Cup place. Uh, Rusev was against Miz. Aiden comes down, causes a distraction. Miz wins via a roll up. Lana is not happy about this and she walks round to Aiden and kicks him in the balls. And then Rusev kills him. And I think he got a nasty, uh, a nasty sort of bruise off, off this segment from what I saw on Instagram afterwards. Quick segment anyway, this, he didn't last very long. Then we get Edge backstage with his former protege, Kurt Hawkins. Can't hear what they're saying either, it's just a little crowd popping moment. Following this, we get the cutting edge with Becky and Charlotte, but he actually starts just with Becky and Edge is there and he's telling Becky that they've had similar sort of careers and that she should change her ways because she's going to alienate herself from her friends and everything. Uh, Becky says that she loves herself and that Edge should get out of her ring. So disrespectful to the Hall of Famer. Uh, and she tells him not to hurt his neck. Careful not to hurt your neck on the way out of the ring. Ooh, that was a zinger. But the crowd is still massively cheering Becky, despite this heavy heel uh, stuff at the moment. They're not going to get... They're not going to get her booed, basically. Charlotte comes out to a chorus of boos. Um, she spears Becky. A brawl breaks out. And, yeah, this feud, although it is quite good and it is quite interesting, as we've said a lot on this show, uh, the roles should have been reversed and Charlotte should be heel and Becky should be face. Rey Mysterio's backstage and he's hugging Jeff Hardy saying, hello, I've not seen you for a while. That was as much as we got there. Then we get the New Day versus The Bar uh, with King, uh, sorry, yeah, with Jerry King Lawler and King Booker uh, on special commentary because, of course, The New Day have been having their separate commentary table uh, for weeks now, and they say, because they're in a match, we'll offer it up to some legends. It's just another excuse to get some of the legends on the show. Um, I wish that they'd just left the commentary on uh, Lawler and Booker in, uh, and instead of having it on with cutting back and forth between them and the normal commentary team. But that's the way WWE does things. Um, this is probably the biggest talking point of SmackDown 1000, probably. But I'll get to it. Big E drops Cesaro on his head and it looked awful. Cesaro's had so many gnarly bumps over the last two years fortunately he's not really been hurt um, Big E does a, a huge spear uh, to the outside on Sheamus that was really hard hitting this is a good match this they always have good matches don't they uh, the bar are, are great and, and, and I love the New Day as well it was really really high energy stuff the same with the Usos whenever the Usos are in the mix um, it's always always a good match with these tag teams uh, as I say, I love it when they're facing each other. So Seamus went to do a dirty pin on uh, on Big E. 
Kofi manages to, oh, was it on Woods? I can't remember now. But Kofi's not the legal man. He manages to break up the, the pin. The ref doesn't see it. And Kofi starts saying, absolutely no way are we losing the titles. He's right up in Sheamus' face. There's no way we're losing these titles uh, to a dirty pin. Um, and, and then he starts saying, you guys are having a good match. Win it fair and square. Don't win it by dirty means. And then... Uh, the bar set to use the um, commentary table on uh, on Kofi. Um, the Big Show's music hits, which was a bit surprising. Uh, Big Show comes down, and everyone thinks that Big Show's there to um, help Kofi, but he's not. He's there to do a heel turn. And I saw a funny thing on Twitter. Um, unfortunately, I can't remember the user. Uh, maybe I'll put it in if I can find it in the edit. He said, celebrate Smackdown 1000 by watching the Big Show's 1000th heel turn. That made me laugh. I thought that was a really funny joke. Uh, of course, he has turned heel and face and back and forth a lot over the years. So yeah, so he puts Kofi through the table. Sheamus then hits a big bro kick and wins. And that means that we have new Smackdown Live Tag Team Champions. Big shock, wasn't expecting this at all. And uh, they mark the 1000th episode with a title swap. Then we get John Cena iPhone promo, or selfie promo if you want to call it whatever. Um, standard sort of John Cena thing. Following this, Rey Mysterio and Nakamura for a place in the World Cup. Mysterio does a little slide under the bottom rope. Uh, this was a cool moment. I thought he was going to do a jump over the rope, but he actually slid under it and lands on Shinsuke. Uh, match is not too much to say about it. There's a lot of like Mysterio stuff in there. And eventually he hits a 619 on Nakamura. And the crowd go wild for it. And then he hits a frog splash. And, uh, and he picks up, uh, he picked up the win. The match actually did really start to pick up towards the end. A lot, uh, lot of stuff going on was Nakamura did get quite a bit of offence in there as well. So it was okay towards the end. So Mysterio's in the World Cup and I think he's the only foreign participant. Every other member I think is American. We said last week about this, they missed a trick here. They've got NXT UK and they've got the guys that debuted uh, at the last Saudi show that they'd signed, the three guys there they could have had a qualifying match trip they could have had a qualifying triple threat match between the Saudi guys and uh, for a place in this World Cup and they could have had something on the UK show to qualify for it so they missed a the trick for me um, as we're getting a celebration of Rey Mysterio the Undertaker uh, interrupts with his uh, music does his long entrance comes all the way down and it was like three minutes to three here in the UK so I thought oh this is the end of the show Undertaker's coming out and he literally said that he has three words for DX the same thing that he said in the promo the night before on Raw rest in peace and that was it bit of a lacklustre end really very anticlimactic but the show on the whole was pretty fun I thought um, it was better than Raw 25 uh, but they haven't been able to hit like the, the heights that they hit with Raw 1000. Uh, that was a really good show back uh, when that aired. So, no Rock. Can't believe The Rock wasn't there. It's his show. Smackdown is his show. There was a little tweet that they put up that he tweeted out earlier on in the day. And I thought this was a bit of a curveball that they were throwing because they, they put it up very early on in the show. But no, he wasn't there. So, disappointing on that front. I know he's a busy guy, but surely they could have got him on. Or at least pre tip something with him. Such a shame. But on a whole, good show. Uh, so let's do the SmackDown score for this week. And I gave Raw a 7. And I think, I think I would be inclined to give SmackDown a 7 as well. It wasn't quite as special as it could have been for, for a big celebration episode. But it was enjoyable and, and was worth a watch. So... That is my Smackdown synopsis for the episode on the 16th of October 
which marked the 1000th episode of Smackdown. What did you guys think to this episode? Please let me know in the comments below. I will respond to your comments. And uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like I said earlier. We're doing things every week here on Welcome to Wrestling. And we want you guys to come and join in the fun. And we've now got another cat in shot. Goodbye.